Hello everyone and welcome to a very different style of video for this channel. Today's video is going to be a vlog where I venture out of my sewing room and out into the world and I actually do things and interact with things. It's all very strange and I don't do it often so I'm not going to be making a lot of videos like this. But throughout 2018, I've been really determined to make more videos that are the type of content I would want to watch. And I really enjoy watching vlogs, so I want to film some more of them on the rare occasions that I'm doing things out of my sewing room that are still relevant to this channel. So for example, this video focuses on a trip that my mom and I took to the Cloisters and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I also did some fabric shopping while I was in the city, so I thought I would include my purchases in this video. And I have some footage I filmed back in April when I went into the garment district to do some birthday fabric shopping. So I thought I'd tack that onto the end of this video as well. Now, because I know this video as a whole isn't going to interest everyone, I will put timestamps in the description box so you can just skip to the section where I'm in the garment district or the section where I'm showing fabrics, or you can watch the whole thing and the whole adventure. And if you're not interested in any of this video, then I feel you, I understand, feel free to skip it. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to dive right in and you're going to see past me uh, describing some of the things that I'm going to do on the day I was filming and then I'm going to jump in here and there and give you a review of the exhibits we saw as well as context to some of the clips where I was feeling too afraid to film. So it's kind of going to be like me reacting to my own video but I hope you guys enjoy it and let's just get into it. Hello everyone, so I just wanted to film a little intro for this video. My mom and I are about to head off to the train station because we're going into New York City today. There are a couple pieces of fabric that I annoyingly need to pick up and there are also a couple exhibits at the Metropolitan Museum of Art that we're interested in. I really want to see the one on Versailles which I think closes tomorrow but the ones related to the Met Gala are usually pretty good too so we'll dip in and see that and then we're gonna go up to the cloisters so it should be a fun day and I'm gonna try and film little bits and pieces of it you're probably not gonna see a lot of me because it's going to be very hot and very humid and I'm not gonna look like this for very long <laughs> however I can show you what I look like now I apologize for the mess I'm wearing a romper from Mod Cloth, and then I've got this vintage Ship and Shore blouse on. It's got little flowers and leaves on it, which I really like. And then on my feet, I've got the Hepburns from Royal Vintage. I think it's a cute outfit, and hopefully it will be very practical and comfortable throughout today, because we've got several miles of walking to do. And these are just clips from the Long Island Railroad. Um, we took the train into New York City from our local station, which is still really far away. But it's really neat seeing the skyline and the buildings change as you get closer to the city. At least I think it's neat. And we took the subway from Penn Station all the way up to 190th Street Station, which is about 160 streets away, which is pretty far in New York City standards. Okay. We made it! We had to take a sketchy elevator and an express subway, which is always scary, but we're here. So pretty. I bet there's a good view. So it's about a half hour ride on the subway and then the train itself was about an hour and a half. But we're finally on 190th Street and now we're going to try and find the cloisters. But it's a really, really pretty area and it's very um, historic and nice looking subway building. I've never seen anything like it in New York City, but I haven't seen a lot of New York City, so that isn't saying a whole lot. But subway stations don't usually look like that. <laughs> I wonder if I could do costume photos here or if the police would stop me, because this is beautiful. These windows and the stonework. These photos were all taken in the park surrounding the cloisters. The grounds were just beautiful. Uh, there's so much greenery and there's such a lovely view over the river. There were a lot of people jogging and there with their families and their dogs and I could totally see why because it was really just a lovely part of New York City. And then there are these really weird sculptures of knights facing human statues. Something we didn't know when we decided to go to the cloisters was that the Heavenly Bodies exhibit actually extended into the cloisters. So they had, I'd say, almost an equal number of garments related to the exhibit at the cloisters as they did at the actual museum. I think a lot of these were McQueen pieces. It's all three-dimensional, like historical pup paint. This is huge. I love that dress, the texture of it. It's probably 30 feet wide. Look at this, Joe. I need you closer. Is that an 
I love the warmer colors and the headpieces. Thinks we want to do more Renaissance stuff. Oh wow. She was bad, so she had to go in the cage. I guess. Yeah, she's my beautiful friend. Yeah. 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 So this is from 2015, and they used a painting or a tapestry as the print. I think that's supposed to be a giraffe. Feathers actually make up the tree. I thought this one was so funny simply because it was described as a wedding ensemble. So I was just imagining a bride waddling down the aisle in this giant fluffy coat straight jacket thing. And it was just the funniest image in my mind. These are huge. Like they're seriously 20 feet by 20 feet. They're just beautiful tapestries. And the subject matter is a unicorn along with some very creepy looking lions, maybe? I wonder what that was for. You could fit some dresses in there really nicely. Or some very thin bodies. Or some vestments. These dresses were beautiful. They were quite classic looking evening gowns, but they had the prettiest brooches on them and really interesting pleating and piecing. garden. It's so pretty here. I'm really sad that I didn't come here earlier because it really is just a lovely building and it's filled with lovely renaissance themed things from the 13 and 1400s and I'm really really liking it. I don't think I've ever really seen architecture quite like this. Just the detail work and the stonework is really really incredible. It's really cool to see. Like look their faces carved into every tier. I was telling my mom that I thought these looked like Star Wars costumes really nice Star Wars costumes, but that's totally what the draping and the color palette made me think of. These look almost like Edwardian chemises. Maybe not that one. <laughs> this dress was so pretty. It had a very modern, simple elegance to it, but it was also so clearly inspired by religious garments and very modest religious garments. It was just very clever and simple and beautiful. It's probably one of my favorite garments in the exhibit. Jewels coming out of the sleeves. So we've left the cloisters. I really enjoyed that. I don't think it's something that you need to go back and see often, but it was definitely nice to see while we were here. And now we're going to catch a bus and then go to the museum. I just want to mention that I had no knowledge on the cloisters before going there. My mom had been to them before and told me that it was a repurposed monastery, but it was clear by the architecture that it was much older than New York is. So once we got home, I did more research and I realized that it was actually a collection of various religious buildings that dated back from the 800s all the way to the 14th century. And they were transported stone by stone to the cloisters uh, and built as a series of rooms that you can walk through. And when I found that out, it was just way more interesting to me. And I was kind of kicking myself for not reading more of the cards that they had and paying more attention to the actual rooms we were in and the architecture in general. Because I was just there kind of skimming everything and finding it really impressive but not looking too deep into anything specific. And now that I know that, I find it way more interesting and I really want to read up on it more and then go back and have a new appreciation and a new eye for the various buildings and how they connect together and integrate with the architecture that was built in the 1920s and 30s. And I wish I'd known that and done some research prior to actually going. Then there is a very, very long and urine-scented bus ride that took us to the actual Metropolitan Museum. 
Our primary purpose for going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art was that I wanted to see the Versailles exhibit, which closed the next day, and my mom was really interested in seeing the Heavenly Bodies exhibit, which correlates with the theme of last year's Met Gala. And in the basement, they had an exhibit of pieces that were on loan, that were all garments that had been worn by popes over the years or gifted to popes. All of these pieces were so heavily embellished and embroidered, and the quality of work was unbelievable. There were robes that were just covered in what looked like elaborate, carefully done paintings. And it wasn't painted, it was all done with the finest silk thread you can imagine. You couldn't see any of the stitches and it was just incredible. And then other pieces had gold work on them and filigree, and a lot of them were from the 18... 40s and 50s, I believe, and then there were some that were from the 1940s even. And I gather a lot of the craftsmanship on these pieces is done by nuns, which I suppose explains the amount of time that's devoted to it, but it was seriously breathtaking. Now the main portion of the Heavenly Bodies exhibit was hosted in the European Medieval Art Wing. It's basically three hallways that don't really connect well together, and then there are little rooms between the hallways, and everything leads into a big room, and then that room leads into two side rooms that lead into another staircase area which takes you off into all of these different directions. So it's not an easy space to walk around and see everything that's there, and we actually ended up missing out on two hallways worth of the exhibit because we were never led back to that point uh, while walking around all of the garments. So that was kind of a shame. And there were also, weirdly, a lot of garments up very, very high. So so these elaborate pieces were on these pedestals 10 feet in the air where you couldn't see them. And it was very dramatic and visually interesting, but it would have been nice to see the garments up a little bit closer. probably had five or ten couture really beautiful garments that were out on display and roped off so you could get relatively close to them and really see all of that detail work. And these were just incredible. I loved all of these pieces so much and the level of embellishment and detail. Unfortunately for every one of those garments, they had two or three relatively modern garments um, that clearly had religious influences, so I understand why they belonged in the exhibit. It's always nice seeing the techniques that are used on these provocative runway pieces, but I felt like they looked quite bland given the background for the exhibit. So it would have been cool to see more dramatic garments, or at least I would have enjoyed that. This one was really funny. I related so much to this garment because I feel like this is the physical interpretation of a ruffle monster, which is me like 50% of the time. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to wear it, but I definitely relate to it. Okay. Then we got to go to the Versailles exhibit, and by this point, my camera battery had almost ran out. My camera's running low on battery. Yeah, yeah I'm having no problem. And we haven't even gone to the exhibit I actually wanted to go to yet. <laughs> but I will share my thoughts with all of you. So it was really cool seeing some of the 18th century pieces in person. Even though I've been to the Metropolitan Museum of Art several times, I've actually never been to the Costume Institute portion of it, or at least the regular costume portion of it, because they always have rotating shows going on. So this was one of my first times to get to experience a lot of 18th century fashion in person, and it was really, really neat. Uh, just getting a little bit more perspective on the materials they used and how the trimmings looked in person, and being able to examine the garments a little bit more closely. The embroidery was just beautiful, and it was interesting to see how subdued some of the silhouettes were in person. I think of 18th century court gowns having grand panniers, but a lot of these were relatively narrow and made with simpler pocket hoops. So I think that's definitely going to influence some things that I have planned in the near future. This one is? Yes. Look at the sequins. So that was a men's coat before it was cut out. Wow, it's beautiful. 1780s. Yep. I like how um, how simple it is. Like most of the texture comes from the material. I also really love the stomacher on this piece and how it was created with this almost dappled, rippled fabric effect uh, that had all of this fringe work the on it. And this is very Victorian looking. It said it had been altered. It's interesting how square the back of the train of that is. 
can see all the eyelash lace. The stripe gown was just lovely. I especially loved the way they did the chemise underneath it. The sleeves had this really interesting gathering effect that almost looked like the material was braided. And the hem was really interesting too. It was finished with these pink ruffled strips of fabric, but the ruffle near the hem was very narrow, and then there was a much wider portion, and then there was another tiny ruffle on top. And I'd never seen anything quite like that. They didn't have a lot of garments in this exhibit. I would say that they had maybe a dozen, but they were all really beautiful examples of 18th century fashion. And they had quite a bit of furniture as well as models um, and some guards uniforms. So you got to see a range. It wasn't just women's clothing. The way the jacquard's woven with such thick threads over the velvet. It's really cool. Then we left the museum and we got lunch. I was very proud of myself because I remembered where the Chipotle was near Bryant Park and I'd only been there once before, like six years ago. And then we went to the garment district. So I only needed one fabric. I needed one 10 yard cut of red shotting, which I was going to get for a project for Patreon. That was all I needed. And I was very determined not to get anything else because I have enough fabric. I don't even really have place to put more fabric. So I was just gonna get that one cut. But I got more than that one cut because one of my favorite stores, this is actually quite sad, uh, was going out of business and they had everything really, really cheap. Uh, I'm not going to say how inexpensive it was, but I paid half of what I usually pay for fabric in the garment district and garment district prices for me are already half or third of the prices you would find silk and wool at online. So this was a smoking deal and I couldn't resist it. So I got some pretty standard fabrics that I think I will definitely be able to find a use for even if I didn't need them in this moment. So the first thing I bought is this Silk Du Peony and it's a very very dark gray color and it has such a beautiful drape in hand and I really like this color because it's not quite black but it's definitely not a lighter gray and has a bluish base to it which I thought was really really nice. And then to go with that I bought this jacquard brocade material. It's like a brocade weave but it doesn't have any sheen to it and it's got sort of a mushroom colored base and then charcoal and pinkish reddish toned flowers on these squares that are woven into it and I loved this fabric and I love how it looks with the darker one. I think I'm going to do a menswear inspired Elizabethan project out of these. And then I also got a couple yards of this pink which picks up on the tones in the brocade really, really well. And to top that all off, I'd really like to make a jacket that goes over top of it, maybe something armor inspired. So I got four yards of this wool and it's got sort of a waffle weave effect to it. A really, really cool texture. I think that would look amazing with some quilted details. Then I found this shanting and I just fell in love. It's not going to show up very well on camera, but it's got all of these different colors of threads in it. So everything from the lightest ivory-ish based pink uh, all the way to a deeper fuchsia and orange and peach and just really, really lovely. Then to go with this, I got two yards of ivory shanting and I got two yards of this orangish one, which has a yellow shift to it. So this is definitely going to be something Renaissance with really huge sleeves. This is a fabric that I'd been eyeing up at another store and chosen not to purchase. It is a dupioni that has stripes woven into it. And this is in the nicest dark green. And they had eight yards of this left and I got all of it. I would have purchased 10 yards if they had it because I want to do something 18th century out of it. I'm not sure that eight yards is enough for the level of ruffles that I would like this project to have but I still got it because it was just an amazing deal. This is my favorite of the fabrics and the camera's not gonna do justice to it. So this is a very vibrant green fabric that has almost a yellow shift to it. And I got six yards of it and I'm going to turn it into an 1890 skirt and then make a blouse of some sort to go with it. Speaking of blouses, I got four yards of this blousing. It is 100% silk and it's got a really beautiful check pattern on it. I actually own some of this and I've been wanting to get more of it. So uh, I figured I would get it at that amazing closing store price. So that's what I got there. And then this is a Dupioni. They had about a yard of this left and I jokingly said if they give it to me I will take it. So the guy was really nice and he said I could have it. So I didn't pay for that one but it is beautiful. Love it. Look at that iridescence. If they'd had more of this I would have purchased probably six yards. And then last up is the most amazing wool melton coating. 
They only had two yards of this, but it's very wide. So hopefully I can turn that into a more structured 1940s style coat. I would have preferred to get this in a black or a burgundy, but I do like the mottled gray and the weight of this is just stunning. And at the price I paid, I really couldn't go wrong. Um, I would usually pay that price probably for a quarter yard. Getting two yards for that price was just a score. So that's my little fabric haul. <laughs> Uh, that was not planned and I probably shouldn't have done that, but I have no regrets. I love that store and as sad as I am to see them go, I was really happy to take advantage of some of their moving sales and I'm even tempted to go back in and purchase more. But I don't think that's going to happen, but it could happen. I'm very, very tempted. <laughs> so now onto the footage that I filmed in April prior to my birthday. Uh, the story behind this is that I was really busy for the two weeks prior to this trip, so I hadn't done any planning. And I didn't really feel like I needed to do planning since I had so many other projects planned. So I decided to just go in and have fun and purchase whatever suited my fancy. So I am in a big rush, but this is the outfit. The blouse is vintage by the brand Ship and Shore. I think it's from the 60s. The pants are from the Collective. The belt is also vintage. It has little bears and silver animals on it, which I thought was cute. And it matches the shoes, which are from Royal Vintage. That is what I'm rocking today. I don't know if it goes together, but it's what I'm wearing. <laughs> It started at Haman's Fabrics, which is pretty much my favorite fabric store. I go in there a lot, and they have a really nice selection of pretty much everything that you can imagine. And their silks really caught my eye on this day. I really like this one for something like a bustle dress, but I'm not a huge fan of silk taffeta. And I like this one. And this feels really cool. It's weird, since I don't have a list, I can get whatever I want. And this is where I got the purple and gold fabric that I used for a Rapunzel-inspired dress. Uh, I don't think that made it into a video, so you've probably only heard of it if you follow my vlog. Which you should be doing. I post on it, sometimes. Rarely. <laughs> Love these sparkly embroidered netting. It's usually about 10 or 12 dollars a yard in the garment district and it's a really great alternative to the uh, more heavily beaded stuff. And you can always add beads and sequins yourself to make it a little bit more glamorous. However, it does shed everywhere when you're working with it, so keep that in mind. <laughs> I have some of this at home too. That shed absolutely everywhere. <laughs> Do you remember when we were here last time and there was a pigeon fabric in the window? Pigeon fabric? It was like pigeons dressed as police officers. And you were like, I bet you want some of that. And I was like, no. And I walked by. I've been thinking about that pigeon fabric. It was in the window for some reason. Like that's the impression they wanted to give off that they're the type of store that sold pigeon fabric. That pigeon fabric. So let me tell you, I've been back to the garment district three or four times since filming this video. And I've gone into that shop three or four times and the pigeon fabric is nowhere to be found. So I don't know if I just imagined it, but I'm very, very sad. I have tried looking pretty much everywhere I can online and I haven't been able to come across it and it just, it hurts my soul. I'm very sad that I will never have a 1950s inspired dress made out of construction worker pigeon fabric because I feel like my life requires that. And also I see uh, you're on YouTube. You yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You can see it, no problem. Okay. okay. Take a picture or whatever. Ah. You remember, this is the one. And uh, YouTube, she's the one. Ah, okay. <laughs> I tell you, oh my God, the one put that. Wait, 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 wait. I think I have permission to film. I've made a dress out of this. <gasps> now that's tacky. I really like that, but I don't know what I would do with it. See, but annoyingly, this is too short to make a skirt out of. I'd have to have the stripes going this way. Which isn't as nice. Yeah. Four, four is good or all yep, of them? just four. These are all statins. Or are these taffetas? These are taffetas. I liked this one. That is heavier than you would expect. I wonder if that's expensive. What I need from over here are blouse weights because I want to make an apron tutorial and I want to make a chemise tutorial. Nice, yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. 
Take care. This one is $8 a yard. So I think that's what I'm leaning towards. And people on Patreon really wanted me to get a jewel tone satin or brocade for the evening gown. Unfortunately, I just put the poll up yesterday, so I don't have time to ask people which fabrics I should get. But a couple people said red and jewel tone seemed the most popular overall. So I do really like this navy color. But we shall see what else I can find. This store has the prettiest laces. It's really just beautiful. I can't afford these laces, but I do enjoy looking at them. Every color of velvet you could need. I love this. And this, I love those colors. These are all cotton shirtings. Now what I could do is I could get this and the navy satin and have people vote on which one they like better. Because you can never have too much red shanting around. This is pretty too. <gasps> Ooh, I could use this for the front. I was also really hoping they'd have the pigeon fabric back here, but I don't think they do. However, I do like this one. It's a cute print. Mm -hmm. Though it kind of looks like the flowers have noses, like clown noses. And well, it once you've said that, you won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> they're hairy clown noses too. So I might pass on that. <laughs> I really want this one. But they're checking to see if they have it in lighter color. I have no need for this color, but it's really pretty. <laughs> All right, so the fabric shopping has been done and this is the damage. I have some stuff in the suitcase that we brought in with us as well as some stuff on the chair and a good pile on the table. So um, after I have obviously purchased everything and brought it home, I go through the fabrics and pick out what needs to be bolted and what needs to be folded. I determine what needs to be folded and what needs to be bolted based off of a couple things. Uh, the top one is how unruly that fabric is. So I might bolt three yards of chiffon, uh, but leave six yards of taffeta unbolted since one will fold nicer in a drawer than the other. Uh, it also depends how much space it takes up, like velvet I won't usually bolt. Even though it's nicer to have it on a bolt, it becomes very, very thick when it is folded that way. So it just kind of depends. It also depends how much storage I have in my drawers versus my bolt storage, I guess. Uh, so yeah, a lot of things go into it, but this is the pile of things that will be bolted. This is the pile of things that will be folded. So now uh, everything has been refolded and it has been labeled. I try and label things when I remember the quantity that I bought, or I try and figure out what the quantity is when it's laid out if I don't remember, uh, because by the time I get around to actually using it, I will probably have forgotten, and it's kind of a pain to re-roll it out and measure it. So all of these got labels, unless they are one yard cuts, because that's pretty easy to check, as well as easy to remember. But yeah, I'm really happy with what I got. It's kind of difficult when you're shopping without a list in mind because you find one fabric that inspires you and then you want that fabric to be useful so you get four others that go with it and the quantity and cost of material can add up very quickly. But I'm pleased with what I got and I think I got a good range of materials that will work for anything from renaissance dresses to bustle dresses to some things in between as well as some modern or mid-century pieces. So that's the extent of what I filmed, and since that was filmed so long ago, all of those fabrics have since been tucked away, but I did photograph them before I put them away. So I think I'm going to do a very, very late vlog post about my purchases, and if you're interested in reading that, then I will definitely leave a link in the description box. It will either be a free post on Patreon or it will be on my WordPress blog. So that's the end of this, and I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it was different, but I hope at least some of you enjoyed it because I want to make more videos like this. Not super regularly, just occasionally when I go out into the world and do things that I think are interesting. Is it sad that my definition of interesting is going to a museum? I don't think that's that sad. I'm gonna go before I reflect on it too much. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts and I will talk to all of you very soon. We have the same face shapes. <laughs>